Today I built a to-do list app using Node that takes a command line text-based input and allows you to create, tag, check, uh, even sort and remove different tasks uh, just by entering a few words on the command line. So I'm gonna walk you through the file about how I built that and then we're gonna hop over to the command line and play with it so you can see how it works. Now this whole file is less than 200 lines of code so it's not very complicated how all of it comes together. The only node package I'm pulling in is the file system package and the two files that I need to bring in are going to be uh, this counter.txt file as well as this data.json file. So right now both of these are in the data folder and if we look in them they're completely empty but they won't be in a second. Now we have two functions here, one to convert a number to base 36 and one to convert from base 36. So we'll be storing a number for each task that's created in counter.txt and that file is just one number that gets incremented. But we're gonna display it as base 36 and allow people to refer to it as base 36 and still keep track of which one that we're talking about. So the two main functions here that are used by the other built-in functions are the save and the load function. The save function uh, simply outputs, uh, it's writing a file called counter.txt with the current counter value, and it's writing a file called data.json with the current JSON representation of our current data. And loading is very similar to that. We've already pulled in the counter here, so we don't need to load it. But anytime we decide to load from that JSON file, we are taking, uh, reading that, that file and parsing it as though it's JSON. And if there's no text in there, we just think it's an empty object. So right now, it's going to view that as an empty object. The help function will tell us all of the built-in functions that we are able to use. So let's hop to those. We have some keywords that we're going to use with multiple functions. So sometimes saying the word all will be something special, or saying tagged, or checked, or unchecked. And so by putting these in array, we can test for them and use them inside of the functions that we're about to define. So the majority of the remainder of the file is just these built-in functions, and at the very end is the logic that allows us to take the command line input and split it into different functions that will run. So I'll get to that at the end, but we're gonna look at these functions for now. So in here, we have a function that will list all of the tasks, or we could list the tagged ones, the checked ones, or unchecked ones. There's a big switch statement for the keywords. Otherwise, it will try to do it based on the tag, including the term, or it'll just display all of them. If we tag a task, we supply its ID, and a tag, and it will either remove the tag if it already exists or add it if it doesn't exist. Adding a task will uh, increase the counter by one, and it's going to add this new object with whatever title we've supplied to it. Uh, by default, it is unchecked and it has zero tags, but we'll be able to modify that later. You can also remove, so we can remove all, we can remove only the tagged ones that match a certain tag. We can remove checked or unchecked, or a specific one by its ID. For checking, it works the same way. We give it an ID, and if that is unchecked, it checks it. And uncheck is the same, just with the opposite logic. If it is already checked, it will uncheck it. Rename allows us to give a new title to an existing task based on its ID, and that's it. So when we run this from the command line, we're going to give it the name of one of these built-in functions, and then we're going to supply the argument to that function as well. So we can use it as a space-separated string of words, uh, limiting ourselves just to the names of the functions that work here. So to explain this little bit of logic here, if we run this file with extra arguments, it will split those into words. If the first word is something that is a function that it knows, it will run that function with the rest of the words as arguments. 
otherwise it displays help, or if there's nothing specified, it will display help. Now the final piece on how this comes together as a command line app is this function in my shell config file. So I've defined a function called task, and no matter where I am, it will move into the correct directory, it will run node with that file that we just looked at, and the rest of what I supply to it. So here we are. If I run task, we should see the help. The available functions are list, tag, add, remove, check, uncheck, and rename. So let's add a first task. Now if we do this and list it, we see that with an ID of zero, we have an unchecked task named first task. Let's add a second one. So now if we list our tasks, we see that there are two here. If I were to tag one of these as work, I could say task tag zero work. Now when I list it, we see that it's tagged as work. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and say that it's project one. And so you'll see that this adds now we have tagged as both work and project one. So I'm going to task tag one as work as well. And so now you can see two of these are tagged as work, only one of them is project one. So if I do task list uh, tagged work, we still see both, but if I do project one, it's filtering that down to only those tasks tagged with project one. I'm gonna go ahead and add a third task just so we can get some fun stuff in here. So now we have three tasks, three separate IDs. None of them are checked. Let's go ahead and check one. So now we've checked the first task. Uh, let's go ahead and check the third task which has an ID of two. So now if I use that special keyword checked, I can also filter and say only list the checked ones, or I can say only list the unchecked ones. And so this is another way that I can work with it. Now let's say that I think that the first task is not named well enough, or maybe I did something like task add. And now I've got, oh, this one doesn't have a title. I can say task rename three, and then give it something else. So I'm gonna rename that to fourth task. And now I can view that. So right now we have two that are checked and two that are unchecked. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the checked ones. So now our list only contains the unchecked ones. And I can go ahead and remove these unchecked ones the same way, meaning that my task list is back to empty. So let's create some new items and then check out the counter.txt file and the data.json file to see how the data is actually being stored as we're manipulating it in between runs. So if I say task add task one, two, three, we're going to say task list task tag for work and list that again and then let's check number five so back in our files counter is at seven right now because we are we've created seven different tasks so far so that's always bumped up by one and the data that we have here is JSON that has for number four, the entry is task one, tag work, status false. For five, it's task two. And this one is checked. And then this one here is task three. So at any point you could back this up or you could, if you had a file that was generated here, you could, uh, replace it on another instance and it would just load in thinking that that was the data. 
And that's pretty much all that there is to it. If you want a simple command line to-do list managed by Node stored in JSON with a flexible uh, text-based interface for creating, reading, uh, sorting, and tagging these. Uh, it doesn't take even 200 lines of code to do. And uh, pretty much the sky's the limit.